Today we're going to do a little demonstration of the neck, of what I do for the neck. And we're going to begin this way by just gently stretching. Just getting it loose so that she can be nice and relaxed. And then the first thing that I do is I place the head and see what happens to the chin. The chin line is a little bit over to the side. It's not quite on midline which actually comes largely out of the sphenoid bone, the position of the sphenoid bone, which is cranial sacral work. But we're going to work the muscles today. So we just start out again, getting a little, checking the range of motion and getting a little movement happening. Seeing if there's any tension. And then how I like to start is do a little lymphatic work to move any fluids that might be trapped into the tissues. When there's fluid trapped in the muscles, it makes them harder, it makes them harder to release, and it makes them sore. So to just empty out that muscle of any extra fluid it might be holding is a nice way to work the structure a little bit more efficiently. The next thing that I do to relax the person down and to also get the neck muscles relaxed is to do a cranial base release, which is a cranial sacral technique. The base of the skull, uh, the muscles attached there are being um, focused on so that it can release down and the atlas and uh, occiput can have some spacing between them. A lot of the things that we do on the computer will compress that area, just the position that we hold. And she's a little bit tighter on the right-hand side. Needing to move her head right to release it. Unwind that. And there, it starts coming back. Okay. And the next thing that I do is also a cranial sacral technique and putting my finger at the very edge of the occiput and then also putting my other hand across the hyoid bone. It's a floating bone that protects the trachea. And when you do this, you feel a lot of movement oftentimes in the hyoid bone, finding a new position. Because it's a floater, it is attached only with muscles. It's not attached to the skeleton. You can also feel the base of the skull releasing as the new position of the hyoid bone finds its way. Okay. Well, that's a little preliminary work that I do just to get the neck ready. You don't ever want to go into muscles that are real tight and real hard with a lot of pressure right off the bat. You want to make sure the muscle is ready to, for things to go deep into it. The massage should not hurt. Although there are some deep techniques that are a little bit painful, I find that for my work I've had the most success with less pressure and the depth that I can go is just equally as deep. It's just that I wait for the body to invite me in rather than force my way in, which is easier on the person who's getting the work done. Okay, now we start out by turning the head to the side and then beginning to just work the thumbs into the muscles of the neck, starting back here with the trapezius and working forward. Being very careful as you do this, not to go too deep, but go deep enough to where you can feel what's going on. 
remembering that there's a lot of delicate structures here. Some of them are deep. There's a lot of lymph nodes. There's major veins and arteries, although those are deep, but you still want to be mindful. And there's a lot of nerves that come out of the head, cranial nerves that come into the neck. So it's important to always respect that as you work into these areas of the body. A lot of the shoulder muscles attach directly or indirectly into these areas. There's back muscles that come into the neck. The neck moves in a lot of different directions, so there's a lot of activity that goes on. You never want to massage over the trachea or the Adam's apple area, the voice, the hyoid bone. You don't want to come into that with any kind of force. As I move her head side to side, I'm getting my fingers in right along the vertebrae and giving a little stretch. It's kind of hard to see from this direction, but you'll be able to see it from the other direction. Starting down low and letting the fingers come right up along the vertebrae, all the way to the attachment into the head. This should be relaxing for the person on the table. You're able to feel any restrictions in the neck because the neck won't have a good range of motion. If there is tight muscles or vertebrae that are out, and you want to take it in some different directions. The same thing while you're giving a stretch. up and letting that range of motion happen while the neck muscles are being stretched. And I do a technique that's unwinding the neck where I'm going to hold the head and then just feel for it and let the neck kind of lead me with its fascial structures and unwind itself, which seems a little different. It takes a really paying attention to what's going on with those muscles and the fascial structures in order to let that happen without guiding it. There's a little hang up right here. The body knows where it needs to go, and these unwinding techniques are quite helpful. And what you look for in an unwinding pattern is a repeated pattern. If there's a repeated pattern, you want to put some resistance on it to break that re repeat so that the uh, body can move into another position. And I usually keep a pretty good hold on the occipital base, the area at the base of the skull. And there you can see a good range of motion happening here. That's what happens when you get allow the body to do it on its own, waiting for it to do it. You'll see much more flexibility in any part of the body, even if someone isn't flexible, they'll still show more flexibility. Okay. And
And then here I'm just circling around alongside of the vertebrae to feel if there's any anomaly in the alignment of the vertebrae. And even though there might be something that I find, I don't push a bone into place. That's the job of a chiropractor. But sometimes you can soften the tissue around it and do some more neck unwinding and the neck will correct itself out. That happens on occasion. And another stretch. 